Today is another installment in one of my absolute favorite series that I do here on my channel, and I know you guys love it too, so kick back and relax for Dollar Tree Cricut DIYs. We've got decor, we've got gifts, and it won't break the bank. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and a huge hello to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who come back each week to DIY with me. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. Just hit subscribe down below so you won't miss a future video and you can craft with us. Also, a huge thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video, and let's get into the first project. I have to say one of my top favorite items at Dollar Tree to make over with my Cricut are arrows. I love these wood ones, but my favorite are these wedding signs. They seem to be going away, but I'm hoping that they come back. A lot of you asked, how do you get the words covered up? You can prime them with chalk paint and then paint them the color of your choice. For these wood ones, you can stain them. They take stain really well, but I decided to paint one green and one red. Once the paint dried, I needed to measure. So these larger ones are about 10 inches by three inches. So for all the projects in this video, I'm using my Cricut Explorer too, but you could use a Cricut Joy for most of these or any other Cricut machine. You can also use any other vinyl cutting machine. And if you have one that doesn't accept PNGs, you can convert my PNGs. Just head down to the description to see how. I thought a Christmas movie theme would be fun. So I did Home Alone. I also did Elf and of course Christmas Vacation. If you love Christmas Vacation or Elf as much as I do, I've got dedicated videos to both of those movies I will link down below. It's as easy as cutting and weeding the free files that I'll provide over on my blog. Just check the link down in the description. For the Elf and Home Alone ones, I put those on the larger arrows and those were really easy to apply as well. This is my favorite transfer tape of all time from Expressions Vinyl. It is enough to pick up your vinyl, but it's not gonna rip up all the paint you work so hard to put down. Again, all three of these are free files over on my blog and most everything I am sharing today will be free so you can recreate them yourself. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, be sure to pick up some of this fun ribbon and let me show you how to make it over. I really like these three inch ribbons because you have a lot of area to work with, but you could even do this on the thinner ribbons. Grab some heat transfer vinyl. I'm using white and I ended up cutting out some different sayings that were two inches tall. Then I'm going to take this Buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to apply Merry Christmas. This is just in a fun font I found in design space and I'm using my Cricut Easy Press Mini to press it down. I have it on the lowest setting and I'm using a Teflon sheet just to protect the ribbon, but it went on super great. And I like to take these ribbons and put them in my tree so I can put whatever saying that I want and kind of spice up my tree with that ribbon or you can even put it into a garland. I love here how this little message is peeking now, and obviously these would be great to wrap around gifts, but for Christmas, I think it's so fun to incorporate this into your decor. You could put your last name, a variety of different things. These crates from the Crafter Square section are awesome for DIYs, and I had one that I had recently stained and didn't end up using for another video, so I decided to make it over into a little gingerbread book stack. I painted both sides of the middle rung to kind of look like a book in a red acrylic paint, and I also made sure to extend it to the sides. Then I measured and realized that my letters needed to be no more than a little over three quarters of an inch, so I went into design space made sure that they were only 0.75 tall and then I cut them all out. I went through with my paper transfer tape again because I'm working on wood and paint and I'm applying the gingerbread first. I just like to do the center first. It helps me line everything up but it's personal preference and I did sprinkles and cookie co in red so it stood out based on the background color. Then I took some cute little ribbon I got from Dollar Tree and glued it around so it looked like the books were wrapped together. I added a fun little gingerbread man I had left over from a recent mystery box. It's just from Dollar Tree painted brown with some white little details. Added a bow and this thing is going to be perfect for a tiered tray in my little hot cocoa slash gingerbread setup. The other day I was browsing at Dollar Tree as I do and I was shocked to see how nice these stockings were. I ended up grabbing them and just cut out all four of our names in just some red heat transfer vinyl. I believe this is HTV Rond. I like their brand of vinyl and I just pressed it on with my little easy press mini and these things are so cute. They're nice because you could easily do this for work, a classroom, or if you have a house where you have a mantle and somewhere else where you could do secondary stockings, these are super quick and easy and nice and cheap. 
Another quick and easy and nice and cheap, but really cute are these appetizer plates. Now I did a similar project back in the fall for my fall Dollar Tree blanks. And I thought instead of putting those away and buying more plates, why don't I take the vinyl off and redo them every season? Vinyl's not that crazy expensive for that small of a piece. So I just cut out Mary in red and I just washed the plates off after I removed the vinyl and then replaced it. Then that way I don't have to find a place to store it and these can just stay out on my table with the different seasons on top. This is another free file that I'll have for you over on my blog and I love how the letters curve to fit perfectly in the center of that plate. Just about everywhere you look, prices are going up and that is why I love to share my Dollar Tree tips and tricks with you guys so you can get a high-end look on a budget. Another way that I like to save, especially heading into the holidays, is by using the free Upside app. It gives cash back for groceries, gas, even dining out, and it's super easy to use. My favorite way to use it is when I fill up my gas tank. When I'm running low, I search the area around me for participating stations, and then I claim the offer that I want. The location-based search helped me just this weekend when I needed to fill up after visiting my parents' house. It showed me the participating stations along my route, which was great because I wasn't familiar with the area. Then it's as simple as claiming the offer, heading to the gas station, and checking in on the app if that offer requires it. Then you pay as usual with a linked debit or credit card, and some offers might ask you to snap and submit your receipt too. And that's it, it'll process and hit your account. I can cash out at any time in a ton of different ways like direct deposit, PayPal, or opt for an e-gift card for brands like Amazon and Home Depot. I recently treated myself to a Starbucks gift card, but the next round I plan to use towards Christmas gifts. So to get started, download the free Upside app on either the App Store or Google Play and use the code WIT to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. And let's get back into the Dollar Tree DIYs. Now you guys went nuts for this Hey There Pumpkin sign that I made out of this Dollar Tree wood round for the fall. And so I decided to do a Christmas one. You can also grab these smaller signs if you can't find the big circles and do this project but in a smaller size. I started by removing the hanger because I wanted to make sure I kept that intact. I really like hanging it from what it comes with. And then I grabbed some early American stain and stained two different wood rounds front and back and let them dry. Then I wanted to add a little color, so I took some painter's tape right across the center and then painted underneath in a deep red. This is called Flamingo Red. Make sure to get your edges, and then I peel off the painter's tape when it's wet. I don't worry about letting it dry because then I don't let the paint seal down the tape. Then for the first one, I'm doing just a general Marion Bright. This is another free file you can head over and download. And with these, you just want to be careful when you're peeling up your transfer tape. Again, here I am using some of the paper transfer tape. For the most part, I'm using this throughout the video. I just find it's a lot more forgiving and I've gotten really used to using it and it's just my favorite. So you stick with what you know. Once that's applied, then I moved on to my second sign, which this Merry Christmas, You Filthy Animal decal is one of mine that I designed. I cut that out to 10 and a half inches wide and then I cut a half circle of these fun little leopard print but with trees mixed in. I thought this was so cute. So I cut that in matte black and this is available in Cricut Design Space. I'll link the information down below if you want to do this one. And then I applied it over my red section that I painted. Now I had to be careful with my little scraper tool to make sure I didn't peel it up even with the low tack transfer tape and it's just the way that this wood is. So I applied both of them very carefully and then I'm going to seal it to make sure that everything stays down. So once that's applied, both signs get a liberal coating of some Mod Podge, and that is just gonna help seal everything down. Your vinyl's not gonna pop off if you've got heat or sun on it, whatever. Then for the Marion Bright sign, I'm taking some big loops of ribbon, wrapping the center in jute twine, tying it off, and then fluffing the edges, kind of pulling them out, and with the wired ribbon, it makes it look nice and full, and I'm gonna apply it to my sign. I tried to use some Dollar Tree like super glue gel, but it didn't work with the fabric, unfortunately. So I just went with hot glue because these are gonna be on wreaths on my inside doors, not my front door. Now both of these will live on top of wreaths like this. This one came from Walmart this year. It's a real feel, but it's not gonna shed like a pine evergreen and I really love it. So if that's still available online, I will link it down below for you. I think these turned out so cute and for only $1.25 blank, can't believe it. 
Back in the spring, I did a doggy inspired DIY in one of my other Cricut Blanks videos and I wanted to do a holiday take on it. So I love these jars from Dollar Tree that are nice and big. We use them right now to store Sebastian's treats. And so I grabbed three of them for two of my cousin's dogs as well as to give Sebastian a new festive one. I did two lids in red with spray paint and then one in green. And then I headed over to Design Space to find a dog bone. This is the one I picked and then I ended up just changing it to a black color so it kind of helped me visually. Then I'm going to type out each of the dog's names in a font that I like and then I'm going to size it approximately to the bone. Then I can go ahead and select both and align over the center. And then when it's where I want it, you want to make sure both the name and the bone are selected and then we're going to click slice down in the right hand corner. That's going to basically cookie cut the name out of the bone and then you'll be able to see it with the spray painted color on the lid when we apply it. I also cut out a variety of little paw prints and ornaments in red, white, and green to add to the sides of the jars and that I will have all saved in design space if you want to go over and just cut it yourself. All the shapes will be sized and everything for you. Here I am again with that paper transfer tape applying Stella, Sebastian, and Boone to the top of the jars. And then I just took little pieces of transfer tape to add some fun to the sides. This is a great gift if you are stopping by somebody's house during the holidays and they have a pet or if you just want to show some love to their furry friends. Now these treats I got so many questions about last time. They are from a local boutique called Two Bostons but I will link their website down below. Sebastian loves them and he gets these treats all the time. I also think they have Christmas colors now too which is exciting. There are so many different ways to use craft paper from Dollar Tree, but this next project is one that I am really excited how it turned out. Now you can use Dollar Tree wood for this, but I decided to do some of these five gallon stir sticks from the hardware store. You can get a pack for like $1.25, so you've got three pieces versus the one at Dollar Tree. I'm using my miter box from Amazon just to chop off the end where the stir kind of handle is, and this equals about 17 inches long. I gave it a quick hand sand with a sanding block and then stained both with my favorite stain of the moment, Early American. Then I was inspired by a sign that I made years ago to create this cut file for my last video and I decided to do a different variation, kind of long, like wider, so that I could put it on this scroll. So this is available over on my blog and I cut it out to be 14 inches wide because I knew my top pieces were 17 inches wide. Once it was weeded and covered in that paper transfer tape, it was time to take my craft paper and cut it down. Now, I definitely left a lot more slack than I knew I was going to need because you would much rather trim it later. So I laid it down, used my two pieces of wood to kind of make sure everything wasn't going to roll around on me, and then I applied it. Now here I'm going to justify it more to the left just because that is the original edge of the paper and then that way I don't have to worry about cutting two straight lines, I just have to cut the right one straight. If you carefully pull off that paper transfer tape, you won't have any issues, it'll come right off the paper, trim your sides and then use hot glue to attach your strips to the top and the bottom. That's going to help it hang and it's also going to help so it doesn't roll up because you've got weight on either end. Trim any excess paper that you've got and then I added some more hot glue to the back just to do a little hanger. You could also probably use a stapler if you've got thin staplers to hook it to the back. But I love this, especially on the wreath. It would look beautiful above a nativity as well. I've been eyeing this sign from Kirkland's for a while now and I decided to just make it with this foam board. So I grabbed some Dollar Tree foam board and I measured because I'm looking to create a square sign. So the short side is 20 inches, so I measured and cut the other side to 20 inches and I just used my level to make sure I got a straight line. I'm just using a hobby knife, you can use an X-Acto knife, but that's the easiest way I've found to cut it down. Then I'm taking some 1x2s because I like to do this and cut my own versus getting the Dollar Tree wood. It's a lot cheaper and it just works better for me. Once I've got my two side pieces, I'm laying the piece across the top to make sure that it's going to overlap. We're going to mark it and cut and then insert into the sign. Repeat that step for the bottom and you've got a framed out sign. I also took the scrap from the square being cut and created a frame for that too, so I could create two signs out of the one piece of foam board. After a quick hand sand, I took those to be stained and then I brought the foam board upstairs and painted the small rectangle green and the big square red. Now they needed a couple coats, so just keep that in mind. 
Now for this tis the season to be jolly file, it is much bigger than what you can cut, especially for a 20 by 20 sign. So you're going to size it to 17 inches and then we're gonna duplicate it. I used the contour feature to get rid of tis the season from one of them and then also got rid of to be jolly from the other. So I have two pieces that I don't have to slice in half. Then as you can see here, I've got the two pieces that will easily fit on the two mats and I don't have to worry about cutting them apart. Then I decided to assemble my sign first before I added the decal. So I made sure all of my pieces fit, flipped it over, and then I used my staple gun to adhere my frame to the foam board. Now don't worry if after you paint your foam board a couple times, it has a curve to it because once you lay it on this wood and staple it down, it will straighten right out. Then I weeded out both of my sayings, added paper transfer tape, and then it was time to add it to my sign. I started with the jolly to make sure I could get the bottom of the J lined up with the bottom of my sign. And once that was in place, I went back through with the tis the season. Now my S was just a little bit too big, but when I went to apply it, I was able to carefully go over to the border. And then I just took my hobby knife and trimmed it down. So it looked like the S just went behind the trim. No big deal. I love how this turned out and it's so much cheaper than the Kirkland's one. I made this for well under $10. I did the same thing with the green one, and this is another free cut file. So both of these for these large signs you can find over on my blog. Super cute, super fun, and you wouldn't guess their Dollar Tree. Speaking of not guessing it's Dollar Tree, this next one is also one of my favorites in this video. I grabbed one of these wood panels, and typically I don't tell you to buy wood from Dollar Tree, but I thought this could be a fun little $1.25 project. I quickly sanded it down just with a hand sander, and then I stained the entire thing early American then I measured to get about five inches tall by 10 inches wide to create my stencil. Now, because I'm gonna stencil, I just used some scrap vinyl that I had laying around instead of needing a certain color. And then instead of weeding the outside like we have been on most projects, we're gonna weed out the inside so that we can use it as a stencil. Here's what that should look like. And then I took my paper transfer tape, tried to apply it, and it was a sad sauce moment because it wouldn't stick at all. So to fix that, I just went through with a quick coat of light Mod Podge, let it dry, and then applied it. That gave my stencil something to stick to. So once I did that, I was in a much better position to then stick it down, apply Mod Podge to seal down my stencil, and then use a disposable makeup sponge to do the different colors. Now I get a lot of questions on why would you do vinyl versus when do you do the painting? And honestly, I just, usually have more paint on hand than I do colors of vinyl. I always have white and black, maybe a little red, but I always have a lot of colors of paint. So once I got that all done, I peeled off the stencil and removed the little pieces while it was still a little wet. And then to finish it off, it's as easy as adding some hot glue to some clothespins, gluing them around the outside so the clip faces outward and adding a little kickstand. And you've got a cute little piece of decor. And once the Christmas cards start coming in, you can clip them onto the back and you have a fun little festive display. Also PSA, all these are Dollar Tree Christmas cards. How cute. So I have a confession, I think I'm addicted to throw pillows and you might be too, so here's a fun project. I preheated my heat press to 315 degrees for 30 seconds and I got these placemats recently at Dollar Tree. Now I wanted to try something that I saw on TikTok and you only need one placemat to make the pillow. So you start by cutting out your design and all three of these will be free over on my blog. Finn loves Baby Shark, so I applied this decal to the front of it. I did a Merry Grinchmas, and then I also did this Christmas movies and hot cocoa to represent all of my favorite Christmas movies. Then you can unpinch the front and the back layer of the placemat and put a little slit in the back. So depending on if you're using the green side or this tartan side, I made it just big enough for my hand and some stuffing to fit in and I stuffed the whole pillow. Then that way you don't have to worry about gluing anything together. And when each pillow was stuffed, I just took some baker's twine, some like yarn, whatever you have on hand with a needle. And I'm using a doll needle really quick to stitch up the back just so then that way all the stuffing will stay inside. It will stay nice and soft and it's something that Finn can even lay on and it won't be uncomfortable. I absolutely love the Christmas movie and hot cocoa one and the Grinchmas is super fun too on the dark green. 
So while I already have an addiction to pillows, we'll add these three to the stash. Now you guys that have been watching for a while will probably fall over when I show you this project and say that I actually love it, but it includes glitter. So I love to grab plastic ornaments every year and glitter them. It's just a fun thing that I like to do and it's the only time I get excited about glitter. So I grabbed some of this mop and glow. You don't have to get the big container. That just happened to be all that Home Depot had. Grab some funnels and some cups along with your glitter and a variety of ornaments. Pop off the lid, put a funnel into your ornament and fill it up with some mop and glow. Then swish it around, make sure you get it fully coated and then stick your funnel back in the container and then that way it can all drain out. Then take a second funnel, so this is a set from Dollar Tree that came in a three pack, fill it with some of that glitter, and then take a paper towel or something on the end so you don't get your fingers all gross and just give it a good shake. I like to turn and shake and this is in real time and it's almost like magic, it's just gonna coat the entire ornament. Then I shake off all of the extra glitter and you can put it back in your container if you're just glittering ornaments. If you're nitpicky about your glitter, then you can just throw it away. But it's awesome because then you can put whatever you want on it as far as vinyl. I did a Bluey, a Grinch, Finn's name on one, obviously an elf inspired one and a Grinch one. And like I said, I've been doing these for years. So I've got Clark Griswold ones. I made Finn a Mickey one. This Blackhawks one is from when Alex and I were dating. So tons of different options. These are so fun and I do them every year. Dollar Tree has these fun felt DIY things. They've got a snowman, they've got a gingerbread. I decided to grab two of them and if you can't find these packs, just get some felt and cut a tree yourself. But I cut out two sayings that I designed to seven inches wide to go on the bottom of each of these pieces. It was super easy to apply with low heat with my little easy press mini. I love that thing. If you don't have a heat press and you are looking at one, I would recommend it. I use it all the time. Then once everything is applied, I'm taking hot glue around the border of my tree to hook all the edges together. And then I stuffed it with some polyfill. Make sure to leave the bottom open when you're gluing it together. So then that way you've got a hole to stuff. And then once everything's stuffed, glue the bottom shut. And you've got a fun little pillow that you could display either way. I did a rocket around the Christmas tree, but then I also had to do a nod to Christmas vacation so I could do whichever side I'm feeling that day. That's gonna do it for today's video. You guys have to let me know down in the comments what your favorite project was today. And also if you use any of my free files, tag me on social media, or you can also send an email to hello at whiskeyandwhat.com. It will get to me and we may even share it in an upcoming newsletter. I'd love to see what you guys create with my files. A huge thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to head down to the description and check out more information. You can download it for free on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And and use the code WIT for $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more when you use the Upside app. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!